So if we, you know, when we say number 71, we go, when it, where, do we, where do temptations come from? So the devil, the world, I guess the world, the flesh, and the devil are the three areas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when we say the world, we mean all that is going on in the world which is not according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Maybe persons, maybe radio, television, books, anything. Yeah. That becomes, even a bottle of wine can become a temptation to a person. Uh, obviously, it depends on the person's action and the quantity and so on. Or it can be from within us, because we ourselves are weak. Uh -huh. A temptation, Each, we should watch ourselves. Some people are stronger than others in this matter or that. Some people get angry easily. Some people get temptations to chastity easily. Some people get temptations against, let us say, um, admiration or praise God. For, they get temptation to envy we should watch ourselves. And temptations can come from the devil because the devil wants our ruin. He doesn't want us to go to heaven. So he can arrange events and even put thoughts in our minds to lead us to sin. It's just a fact. He got Eve and through Eve got Adam. And that's what we are suffering now, consequences. And talking about consequences too because every time someone sins, it gives the devil more power to tempt the whole world. I mean, literally, it gives him more power over the whole world, doesn't it, in the mystical body of Christ? Yes, because one person's sin affects another. Yeah. Just as one person's good act affects, affects another. Even if we don't know it, we are a society. So, if a person does evil, there are many sins which are obviously affecting others the sins which two people commit. But also, the sin committed by one person alone who goes and steals, or who ruins the name of another person, and then that other person suffers terrible consequences. Or a person who gets one country against another and they, they fight. Mm -hmm. Or one family against another and they hate each other. Or he scatters two friends. He scatters husband and wife. He scatters two partners in a business enterprise. That he ruins another person in business. He ousts another a competitor, telling lies against the person, sabotaging the other. Of course, the consequences can be serious. That's right. So also for good actions. I think in, in this closing, this segment, which is closing our volume one, the letter of Cardinal uh, Chiappi, he said that he was just uh, encouraging us in our work of total consecration to Jesus through Mary. And then he quoted Pope Paul VI, Constitution of the Church, by the hidden, like you mentioned before, by the hidden and kindly mystery of God's will, a supernatural solidarity reigns among men. A consequence of this is that the sin of one person harms other people, just as one person's holiness helps others. So of this is what you're saying. When that we is, sin, we hurt other people, not just yes. ourselves. That is the, the teaching. That is the good teaching. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then he goes on to say, he says, if this is true, how true is it when we give all of our merits to Mary? She multiplies them by her own incalculable merits. This puts into motion a positive spiritual forces to repair the damage due to sin and significantly change the course of history if enough make this commitment. So really he's saying that if we turn our lives over to the mother of God, she will take the little merit that we have and multiply it by hers. Now those are the teachings of St. Louis de Montfort which the Holy Father held up in his encyclical, Mother of the Redeemer. And I think it gives all of us sinners some hope, knowing that even though we are imperfect, if we're trying to do God's will, staying in the state of grace, consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary, that Our Lady will take the little we have and multiply it by her merits. Yes, that is excellent teaching. You notice that we often pray and we say, it is through the merits of Jesus Christ that we are saved. And under Christ, in subordination to him, the Blessed Virgin Mary, through her intercession. So we pray and say, Mary, please accept my little good actions and multiply them, make them fruitful, offer them to Jesus, your son, and let them have much more fruit, bear much more fruit than they could ever bear if they were just my poor little actions. And in today's modern day and age, we understand chemistry, we understand mechanics, we understand science, and when we have certain formulas, there's just a lot more power. You, you can take uh, the, the, the bombs of the Second World War, uh, 
uh, and or the H-bomb of today. The size could be the same, but the explosion power is much more. And so when we're trying to be good in our way and just trying to do it ourselves, yes, it sends into the world a positive force for good when we're good in the state of grace. But St. Louis de Montfort is teaching us, and the Holy Father lives a spirituality. When we give it to Mary, it's like making it an H-bomb. She, she multiplies it by her merits, and that just puts into the world such a powerful force for, for good. Yes, spiritual yes. H-bombs, yes. Yeah, spiritual H-bombs, right. Yes. <laughs> and I think this is what we're talking about. And these, uh, this letter is, is printed in the, in the Catechism as well by, by Cardinal Chiappi. And, um, and uh, we talked to Mother Teresa about this as well, and, and she just has a simple way. She says, I just give everything to the Mother of God. And she takes it and does what she wants with me. And that's Mother Teresa's simplicity of her life. The Mother of God will lead us to her son into a relationship like no other saint can lead us, because Mary is just not another saint. She is God's mother. Mm -hmm.